All right, so I'm filming on my phone using the wide selfie option. I don't know what a wide selfie actually is. I'm just assuming that it's gonna put everything around me into focus because I get so annoyed when I go out of focus while I'm filming these things. I'm not sure what today's video is actually about. I did not read a single book this week. I have been joking that I have turned into a food tube channel and you know what? There might be some grain of truth in that. I did read a few chapters from my book club at work, but I didn't finish the book. We haven't reached that point in our discussion yet. I've just been using it as an excuse. And once again, I'm getting ready to eat. It is very cold where I am right now. <laughs> you might hear the phone buzz in just a second because they keep on setting out these alerts where it's like, stay off the roads, like there's a lot of ice, it's dangerous. And every few minutes it goes off. And I don't know why, like, I don't know how you can make it clearer than that. Stay off the roads, it's iced. <laughs> None of us are used to the cold here, we know that. Yeah, I'm like, I just want to eat and eat well while I'm stuck indoors. And by stuck indoors, I mean stuck as in can't even go to the grocery store for like a curbside pickup or anything like that. Because, you know, we've been indoors for, I don't know, I've been indoors since like March of last year. I'm completely fine being indoors. But I would like the freedom to go pick up groceries whenever I want to get them. But this week, that is not really an option. So much for wide selfie. I went out of focus again. Well, let's see how this goes. I'm making milk bread today because I have run out of my supply. So I need to make some more. What else did I want to talk about? Oh yeah, uh, happy late Lunar New Year. It's technically not um, late. We're supposed to celebrate for like 10 days, so I'm still well within the range. But in the new year, may your money rush in like the river after a dam breaks. May it filter out as slowly as that fancy Kyoto style slow drip coffee, like one drop at a time. So you can hang on to it and buy more things and also, because it is Valentine's Day, <laughs> may you find a beauty who makes you laugh, who will accompany you through the trials and joys of your life. Now wish it back to me because I also want to get rich and marry well. Lately, I have been going through like the worst reading slump. And I think part of it is because work has just been insanely busy, so busy that like we, we've been working on like grant proposals and just proposals for panels, for projects, um, just working on the projects themselves. I spent a lot of time reading and writing stuff at work, but it's, um, so all of my mental energy seems to go towards that. And like after work, I just want to watch TV and eat and drink my wine or my beer. <laughs> There's just no energy left to read an actual book. Like I read some fan fiction, that's fine. But reading a book is like, I don't know, like especially a longer one. I need some time for that. Like, like I need time set aside for it. Um, and you know, weekends are just so short. I guess by most of yesterday cleaning, I did make fish and chips. And this time the smoke alarm did go off, so that was nice. My one accomplishment this weekend, I suppose. But I feel like the fact that the weekend is short, and I'm like, I only have about like one day after, you know, the cleaning and all of that. Like I only have one day, which is Sunday, to enjoy myself. And I have to think so carefully about what I want to do. I thought about, so Nikki mentioned Dragon Age Inquisition, and suddenly I went, I want to replay Dragon Age Inquisition. I have it on my computer. I sat down and I was like, I'm going to play this game right now instead of reading and the problem is that when i sit down at my desk i see all the post-it notes from like you know my project notes for for work just on the wall behind my computer and it just makes me want to this is going to sound crazy but it makes me want to actually like get to work and i'm like no i can't work it's the weekend yeah, I'm just in full-on project mode right now, so my brain is just like geared towards that, and maybe it's just the ADHD peeking through, like where I'm just hyper-focused um, on projects right now, and I'm afraid that if I play a game, like I always get so, so addicted, and I'm going to be hyper-focused on the game instead, and I can't afford to do that right now because I am busy all the way through like the middle of March. There is just no time to um, spend, you know, my work day thinking about games. Like I have to be in project mode as soon as tomorrow starts. I'm just rolling up these balls of dough right now so that they can form. There's supposed to be four perfect balls that you can then fold envelope style and then roll out and then place them inside a, you know, a, a loaf pan so you can have um, a loaf shaped thing made out of these four rolls. Like they kind of look like pigs in a blanket to me, like, like, like that. <laughs> but yeah, they're supposed to be the same size, but I don't want to weigh them because that means I'd have to clean the scale afterwards. So um, right now they're not exactly the same size. I'm just going to try to squish them so they look about the same size, but you know, uh, whatever. So it seems like I have all this energy. I have no outlet for it. 
either mentally or physically. Like your brain wants to think, but can't because it is the weekend. And um, I hurt my foot earlier this week in like the stupidest way possible. It's not bad or anything, but like I can't run or jump. So I'm limited to just basically walking along. And I went on several very long walks on uh, Friday and yesterday, but today it is extremely cold and I'm probably just gonna be sitting here. And I've been eating so much because <laughs> I like to eat and I, and that the one thing that I still have the, I guess, mental energy um, and focus for is making food. So I don't know, I'm reminded of what my dad used to say when I was younger. He used to accuse my mom, like, you're feeding her too much. Look, she's bouncing off the walls. Sometimes I do feel like the, the energy like is excessive whenever I eat a lot, which is always, I always eat a lot. And then I can't like exercise or, you know, work on something that will take up my, um, like that will take all my focus. Anyways, I just gotta cover this and we'll leave it here for um, an hour so it can puff up. I used to not think that temperature actually affected your baking. Like I know that I would hear bakers say it, and I go, oh, it's because they're professionals, they have to be super perfect or whatever. But then ever since I started like cooking and like baking last year, I've noticed that temperature really does affect <laughs> how long it takes for things to, um, like for bread to rise and all of that stuff. So I'm gonna leave it for an hour, but it's probably gonna end up being a bit more than an hour. And I really, really hope I fix my reading slope problem. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna go stare at my bookshelf for a second, see if there's anything there that I might possibly want to read. Oh, hey, there's a food filming option. What does that do? Well, as you can see, it's been an hour and it has not quite risen as high as it usually does normally. It's like up here, like puffing up. And also, whoops, I did not push that third one right there to the back of the pan like I was supposed to. So now it's just going to be lopsided. Hopefully, once they bake, it won't be as noticeable. Um, and, you know, as long as it tastes good, I will be fine. This does give me time to preheat my oven, though, because I forgot to do that. Maybe the heat from the oven will warm up the apartment enough that the bread will rise more. Right now it's 65 degrees in here, which is uh, the highest that they recommended we go with thermostat. You know, I prefer it cold, so it was already this temperature anyways, but, um, but you know, with the oven, maybe it'll get a bit warmer. So while I was waiting for my milk bread, I started reading this graphic novel called, let me see here, My Favorite Thing is Monsters by Emile Ferris. And my friend told me to read this way back around Halloween, and I bought a print copy over Christmas break as a Christmas present to myself. I really thought about buying it in ebook form like I always do, but look at this, you cannot. It wouldn't be the same reading something this magnificent on a phone. I just wanted to show this page because it is Valentine's Day, coincidentally. The premise of this book is there's this little 10 year old girl, I can actually just show you right here. There's this little 10 year old girl uh, whose neighbor gets murdered and it's set in 1960 Chicago. And this book is supposed to be um, like her diary, so she illustrates everything, so you can kind of see, um, let me just show you, Karen Reyes, and she's really into movie monsters, and those B-movie horror films, you can kind of tell just by looking at the, these drawings, and I can see why, I heard it took the author a very long time to finish this book, and I can see why, um, I usually speed through graphic novels really fast, because, you know, there's not a lot of text, and it's mostly images, but I've actually have been spending a lot of time just staring at all these pictures, it's, Look at that. Yeah, I am having a lot of fun reading this. <laughs> um, but I think my, my bread is almost done, so let me go over there and take a look at it. Okay, so the bread is done, and it did expand, so it, there's like no weird hole or anything like that, but it's obviously <laughs> it's still a bit lopsided, but it's okay. I'm gonna wait for it to cool down, and I'm gonna eat my leftover fish and chips, and I will come back and eat this afterward. Okay, so I have here the finished product. Now, let's heal it apart. So I'll just, I wonder if I can pull it up for you to see eh, how to do this. How do food tubers do it? Can I see? And then, so it just looks like this on the inside. This is the top part. So earlier I ate the fish and chips already, but that was at 6.30 and it is now 10.10. So I'm probably going to stay up late tonight, so I don't think that that one meal is going to last me. So therefore I'm going to make 
another dinner. I'm gonna make kimchi fried rice. So um, there's like all these recipes out there for it, but I'm making like a, I basically just throw it together. <laughs> Whatever I remember usually goes into kimchi fried rice. Also, I am super excited. The reason I'm getting to stay up late is I know I'd said before that I am super, super busy this week, right? But because the city is um, pretty much shut down right now due to the bad weather and the fact that we're just not used to this kind of bad weather, my workplace emailed all of us and said, you are free to take the day off. Well, actually, no, they said, like, we basically have no choice. You are taking the day off for the next two days. So I'm not going into work until um, Wednesday afternoon. And, um, you know, for somebody that thought that she was going to have to keep working basically nonstop until whenever, I, that was just super, super exciting for me. It's sad, but I'm like rationing my spring onions because I can't get to a grocery store and I can't actually have anything delivered to me. So I am down to like my last what sprig and this is gonna have to last i read some more of my favorite thing is monsters and i'm really loving it it's um very unique because it's a you know it's a mystery and it's kind of a horror story but it's told from the point of view of like like i said a little girl so she's still like she's very precocious um and she's bright enough to understand some things that the adults don't want her to know like they're trying to hide it from her but she can figure it out anyways but even then she's still a kid so you're seeing the story like about this woman's murder and what the like the basically the trauma that this woman has gone through in her past um and the neighbor's perceptions of her and of course it's, it's the 60s so there's all this racism like the main character herself is half mexican but she's white passing however her older brother looks like way more obviously hispanic so um but he gets treated pretty poorly by the people in like that he runs into in chicago um and it's just like observed in a very kind of nonchalant manner by her because it's just part of her everyday life i know i've said it before but damn those illustrations are nice like i love them so much and i spend so much time just staring at them i don't know how long it's actually going to take me to read this book because i was so busy looking at the drawings I'm still trying to decide what to do with my newfound freedom. It's so exhilarating to suddenly have the time off. Like, I know I keep repeating it, but I can't get over it. Like, what do I want to do tomorrow? What do I want to do tonight? i to figure out how much I can get away with eating <laughs> without any exercise whatsoever. onions in there and then I'll put in some sesame seeds and voila that is it now you can see it but there we go done time to go back and read some more I'm gonna pour myself some more wine and if anything I'll see you later I think I can stretch this up see what happens time's running out I just gotta get to the finish line Oh my god, it's snowing outside. I am kind of excited. This is really cool. Dude, there are a lot of people outside now that it's snowing. I keep hearing people and I hear my neighbors watching TV and having a lot of fun. And I'm thinking it's just because maybe they have a snow day as well. I mean, I can't be the only one that got a snow day in the entire damn city. I might put off reading until tomorrow when I actually have natural lighting to use because I don't want to turn on the bright lights. So I'm kind of stuck like hanging over my couch to get the light from the kitchen to shine onto my book. Plus I was fangirling over some of my OTPs and now I kind of want to go read some fan fiction instead. So bye. Thanks for listening.